Um, I guess the hardest part about being mixed is having to explain like what race you are to other people. Because a lot of time you get asked like, oh, like what are you or what race are you, and you kind of have to like just go through your whole family background. People kind of almost try to tell you who you are. My least favorite part would probably be just being lumped into being Asian, and I mean particularly particularly in middle school, just everyone would be like, oh, you're Asian, like, that, that's it, you're Asian, and you are friends with Asian people, and that's just who you are, you know, and they wouldn't give me any other chance to say who, like, I wouldn't be able to choose who I wanted to be, and that's just how people saw me. Please describe your racial slash ethnic background. Uh, I'm half white, half Japanese. I am half white or Caucasian and half Asian or Chinese. My mom is Afro-Latina and my dad is white. I'm black, white, and Asian. Half Hispanic and then Irish. My mom is half Filipino, which makes me a quarter Filipino. And then on the other side, it's Hungarian and German. My mom was adopted from Taiwan, and my dad is German and Swedish, I think. <laughs> my mom is from Berkeley, California, but my dad is from Quito, Ecuador, and his grandparents are descendants of both the indigenous people and the Spaniards. My dad is Taiwanese, and my mom is white or Danish. How do you identify yourself? I identify as a halfy, both Asian and white. More with like the Hispanic side of my family, because I just look more Hispanic. I identify myself as white and Latina. I identify myself as Latina or uh, on applications or sheets, two or more. I always tell people that I'm half Asian because it's just easier that way and most people just don't ask questions and they just assume that the other half of me is white, so. <laughs> what would you say is your favorite part about being mixed? I like to have the best of both worlds. I get stereotypically, like, stereotyped as a white, and uh, I guess society helps me out in that way, but also being Asian is nice because people think I'm smart, and I am smart, so that's cool. My favorite part about being mixed is the food, but also just the culture that comes with it and the values that come with the culture like family because I'm really close to my family on that side. I feel like personally mixed people are, are much more attractive because <laughs> I don't know but I like that. My favorite part about being mixed is getting a lot from a lot of different cultures and the relationship that you have with other mixed kids. How would you describe your experience of being mixed to someone who is not mixed? Um, I mean, uh, um, it's definitely different. I mean, it's, it's weird, or I guess... Uh... It gets kind of confusing sometimes, uh, which one I should be acting like, um, because it's your family and you kind of want to, you know, show both sides of your family, but it's hard to sometimes. I would say people see me as not just one thing, and that can be nice, but also at the same time, it could be different, I guess. What would you say is your least favorite part about being mixed? Um, I guess my least favorite part is you're not, you're not necessarily associated with a specific category or group, like especially when you're filling out applications and stuff, it's a little more difficult. My least favorite part about being mixed is probably the lack of knowledge of both what that means and also specifically um, Ecuadorian, being Ecuadorian, uh, and like 
middle school pretty much consisted of everyone coming up to me and asking me if I'm Mexican uh, because I think being Mexican is the main thing that a lot of Americans tie being Latino or Hispanic to. I've been to China and like the, his friends like, have kind of like kind of made fun of me like uh, because I didn't look full Asian or look the part uh, so it is a bit uncomfortable at times. That like finding who you are and who who you want to identify as. You're not really accepted into any group. Like you're too brown for the white kids, but you're too white for the brown kids. How is being mixed connected to your identity? Well, growing up, um, I went or growing up, I was surrounded with a lot of like white and Asian like kids as well so like I was kind of like both white and Asian and I kind of like I guess I like fit in with that group because like in society a lot of the groups are like similar races which is like pretty sad but like it's true so yeah. Being mixed has played a huge part in who I am. Uh, I've visited Ecuador four or five times and being in that culture and with my family has definitely impacted who I am and it's broadened uh, my view of different customs and traditions and different types of people. I do feel pressure as in as Chinese, I guess. There's a lot of stereotypes about, me, about being smart and logical and intelligent and uh, I think that that pressure can help me uh, advance and like push forward at an academic level but also it can be a lot sometimes. How often on a daily basis do you think about being mixed? I only think about being mixed when like someone asks me about like my background and what I am. I hang out with a group that is all Asian and most of them are half or full even and they all are in Chinese immersion so the group is called the Asian, so I always say that I am 25% Filipino, which is true, but compared to, say, my brother, who doesn't hang out with a lot of people, that, or he hangs out with a lot of white kids, so then, for some reason, he says that he's white, and that I'm white, and that my mom's white. Not as often as I used to. When I was younger, I uh, kind of really hated my tan skin, so I would, like, stay in the shade as much as possible. Uh, to uh, try to become, you know, less tan, but now I like, kind of accepted it and it's not much of a big as, a deal as it used to be. So, uh, probably not, not that much, honestly. I probably don't even think about it most of the time. Uh, generally just when I'm with my dad, uh, because he's Ecuadorian and when we're together, it comes up sometimes and like we'll talk about the family or something like that. How do both sides of your family treat you differently, or some of the differences in how they treat you? Um, so on uh, my mom's side, which is my Asian side, um, my grandparents don't really like white people, so uh, I always feel kind of awkward around them be uh, because I am half white, and uh, they, they don't really like people that aren't Asian or Japanese. Um, and on my dad's side, uh, I don't think they treat me any different. On my dad's side, which is the white side, people just act kind of weird in the way that when other people who aren't part of the family come to reunions and stuff, it seems like they can't figure out how I fit into the family and why I'm there. And on my mom's side, people just treat me like I'm part of the family, but more like I'm less a part of all of the culture and everything. Have you ever had a long discussion with your parents about how being mixed has affected you? What about extended family or close friends? Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that talking to my family, but I definitely have had conversations with my sisters about it and with my close friends about it who are also in similar situations as me. And also who are half Asian. So. I talk with my mother a lot about it because she, she tells stories about people calling her names and stuff and then explaining to me what I am. 
and it's gone on for a while, or dinner conversations with my whole family. Um, and then even mainly friends that are also mixed, I'll talk to them about it because the conversations go on for longer compared to just talking to someone who isn't. Has there ever been a time where you felt pressure to act more like one of your races? When I am with my extended family, I feel like that, especially on my mom's side since I didn't grow up in a place where there was a big Latino community and I don't speak Spanish and I feel like I'm less a part of the family because of that. Because I don't know how to act Ecuadorian. I've only ever really acted like what I've grown up with, so I don't know if there's a way to act like either of my races. I guess I've never really been pressured to act one way or another. I've been lucky enough to have that, yeah. Do you have any advice to someone who's figuring it out? I think just accepting that you're both and maybe embodying both sides of your family is definitely huge to some people and I think it could also help you out. Be proud of what you are and it's your choice and no one's there to like confront you or even they, no one should even like question you for what you are because it's you're the one who knows it. Be you. Just be who you are around people. Don't like just think you're different if you like mix or something. Just like I don't know. Just do you? <laughs> don't don't focus on your race that much because that is not your defining character. Cause it's like. Uh, your hobbies, what you like to do, your dreams, your goals, those are the things that define you and your race is just like the surface and it's basically nothing compared to what else you have. So don't listen to others who are making fun of you because of your race. Uh, you just need to find what you love and just chase your dreams. That's about it. <laughs>